by light. The time in a ball player's career that he dreads. But not this group of players. They are the legendary Livingston Dodgers. <laughs> Game called. Across the field of play, the dusk has come. The hour is late. The fight is done, and lost or won, the player files out through the gate. The tumult dies, the cheer is hushed. The stands are bare, the park is still. But through the night, there shines the light of home, beyond the silent hill. Livingston Dodgers came to be formed from a nucleus of the best semi-pro players in New Jersey. Standouts in the Metropolitan League and the Essex County League included the slugging pitcher-catcher Bill Curry, the prodigious blasts of Tom Skull, and the dentist of renown, Bill Doc Pollock with over a thousand wins to his name. Their playing careers were given a second life by over 30 and 40 leagues, but especially by the Roy Hobbs World Series, playing in Florida's major league stadiums, such as historic Terry Park dating back to the 1920s, and ultra-modern Jet Blue Stadium. When you guys came out of, um, well, you played around with many, many teams. Yeah. You and Tommy Skull were um, Tommy and I mates. Were, yeah, Tommy and I always played together. Yeah. We played on a team that Frankie Milan ran, mm -hmm. which was the uh, New Jersey Dodgers. We played for a team called the Newark Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Harry Jenkins uh, put that team together. And the, the last year of his life, he just wanted to go out in a, in a blaze of glory with mm -hmm. the, uh, a team that commemorated the Negro League. Mm -hmm. uh, we played for the Julios. We played for, <laughs> I don't remember all the teams we played for, but you know, it's been a long time. But the Livingston Dodgers then came to being out of necessity. From all these various teams, you got together a core. Well, at some point, we were, we felt as though the teams that we were playing for weren't being run effectively mm -hmm. and fairly, and so we kind of split off and started our own team. And mm -hmm. uh, the thing I try to do is make it fair for everybody, so that everybody has a good week down mm -hmm. here, enjoys playing, and we can. Uh, be successful as much as we can. Now, Tommy, you and uh, Doc Pollock um, go back a long ways. You guys were a package deal, teammates, battery mates. And uh, but I'm wondering, did you ever hit against Doc? Did you ever really? Uh, what did he have, really? What did he have? Uh, yeah, I hit against Doc plenty of times. Well, I got the bat against Doc plenty of times. Didn't hit him too well. I, those days, I was a switch hitter, hitting lefty against him. Um, Batting lefty against him, you can see that spitball coming in a lot better than you could right it because it was coming into you. Um, 
but he was always, he didn't really need the spitball. He was a great pitcher. And he always uh, had control of the mound and the game. Bill Curry continues to be a hitting and pitching marvel. Hey, Bill Curry, you're uh, one of our legitimate heavy hitters, our, uh, our, our, batting, our batting coach and instructor, our philosopher and counselor, and you're also our most valuable player last year. Yes, sir. Yes, I was. And you have any more of those? Uh, I think we got the next two days for me to get another one. <laughs> well, this is the playoff time. That's right. So I have a chance of a doubleheader win here today, like last year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking, too. And we need it. <laughs> we do. We need that backup. You have any other uh, highlights? I know Keith, uh, Keith Honeywell says he remembers you uh, clouting balls all over the place. Well, that was a long time ago. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm not so sure. What about here at Roy Hobbs? Any uh, highlights for you? Um, Last year was a good year, average-wise, pitching-wise. Um, it takes me a little while to get going down here, I find out. It takes me 12 to 14 at-bats, no matter what the pitching is, and then I start going. No matter how much batting practice you take or anything else, most of it is talking to yourself to stay back and let the ball travel to you, 99%. If I do that, I, I hit the ball. Yeah. I can hit anybody if I let the ball travel. But we need you today. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I'm starting, so we'll see what we do. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. So, Tommy, uh, during your uh, career, you were a star in the Essex County League, where Doc performed, and also uh, one of your teammates, yeah. Bill Curry. Uh, he was the most valuable player in the Essex County League as well. What did you think of Bill as a player then? Well, he's a big presence on the mound, a big presence behind the plate, and... Uh, a great guy with impeccable taste in women's brassieres. Well, thank you. That uh, gives us a new slant on Bill Curry. Yeah, well. To make a team, they needed to be surrounded by equally great players. They started by looking for a spark plug and found that and more in Dave Zavraki, a great glove and speed to spare. They also found a coach, pitcher, and catcher all in one, including clutch hitting Tom McCuskey, and a power hitter in the form of New York Giant lineman Doug Van Horn. George Carlin once said, football is played in a stadium. Yes. Baseball is played in a park. <laughs> How did you make the transition from stadium to park. No, Walter, you know that baseball is a thinking man's game. Football, you know, you know just go straight ahead. <laughs> you know, that, so that's why I chose baseball after football. That's the reason? That's the reason. It didn't have anything to do, you could hit 450 foot shots? No, we take that for granted. We, we assume we're going to hit something. I don't know about 450. <laughs> we assume we're going to be able to hit. But I do enjoy it. It didn't hurt that you were a guy who would hitting for, for, for a profession. <laughs> well, I used to get paid to do that, but they don't pay enough in this lake. Uh, Doug, seriously, you've been coming down here to Roy Hobbs for many, many years and played many teams. Yes. What was your first team? Uh, the, the Dodgers were my first team. Dodgers were the first team? And uh, uh, by the grandfather, uh, Frank Milan was the uh, coach of that team. Yeah. And uh, Frank is here this year, and uh, we may play him uh, because he did orphan a lot of us. Okay. He's the grand poopa of all these yeah. Dodgers. And how about um, any major highlights Walter, in all that time you? for you? Yes, I've had a whole bunch of a whole bunch of highlights, you know. I'm mean, semi-seriously. Other than Keith Honeywell saying you yeah, uh, landed yeah, no, in no, the no, it wasn't even that one. I hit a home run off this pitcher. He was bringing it 90 miles an hour, and, uh, and uh, they all came over after the game and said, "You know who you hit that? Uh, it was Sammy Stewart. He was a professional pitcher." I was one of my prouder moments. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Tommy, uh, you're a veteran at Roy Hobbs. When did you start here? Started in 1996. 1996. Were you with a Dodger team or another team? You've been on many teams. I played with Frank Milan's New Jersey Dodgers. Ah, but there are a few other guys on this team that were on that team as well. That's right. I also Dave Zavraki ran a team that was on 40 and over. Uh huh. <laughs> now you've been on this Livingston Dodger team here at Roy Hobbs. Uh, I co-founded it with uh, Doc Pollock. Oh, that's right. In 1990. Uh, Eight or nine. 
can't remember oh, which year it was. That's right. And uh, and so that's a long time. And you've been I know you still play with other teams, but you've been playing with us consistently ever since. Yes, sir. Yep, every year. I've not missed a year. The old adage in baseball is that you can't have enough pitching. So the Dodgers picked up the Oakland Athletics ace, Bucky Rehan. So, Bucky, you know, I was in the dugout the other day, and they were calling you a crafty lefty. <laughs> what the hell's a crafty lefty? Well, that means I can throw a screwball, a curveball, a cut fastball, and everything else, and move it in and out and up and down, and not too much speed anymore. <laughs> do, you, do you have to be a crafty lefty in order to throw a screwball? Yeah, yeah, because you got to turn it, turn the wrist here. And yeah. For righties, you know, they're going to pull out, and then you, you got them with, with the down and out. However... There's one other thing that you're famous for. That's your devastating pickoff move. <laughs> how long have you had that? Oh, all my life. You know, when I first started, coach taught me how to pick off. I said, this is an easy way to, you know, get out of an inning, pitch, pick a guy off. And uh, I've, oh, I've done probably hundreds of pickoffs. How many balks? One that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Down here. Uh -huh. The guy called a balk on me because I went up. And I came down here, it's like a cheat move right. for a lefty. It's always a cheat move for a lefty. And he called it. Yeah. I said, I've never been called with that. Yeah. And he called the a balk. And I said, oh, okay, let's go on. That's why we would love to see your mastery on the mound, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. How's Thank Bucky? You. Okay. More help was to be needed in the outfield and with speed on the bases. The perfect solution was Marty Cornetto. We're standing with Marty Cornetto in the left-handed batter's box, where he makes his living as one of the stars of the Livingston Dodgers. Since when, Marty? Uh, when did you start coming here? 1994. Wow. But that wasn't with the Dodgers in those days. No. The Dodgers about 2003. Yeah. Well, one of the amazing things about you as a hitter for this team is Boy, you hit doubles, triples, singles. You're one of the speed merchants on the team. At this age. Wouldn't you say? Above average speed, right? Yeah, at this yeah, age. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, but like, for instance, today, you lay down a perfect bunt. That's one of your specialities, right? Yes. So, so tell me, um, when you bunt, could you show me a little bit about how you bunt the ball? What's your technique? First of all, you go in front of the plate, all right? You keep the bat fair. You don't jab at the ball. You let the, catch the ball with the bat. If you wanna, if you wanna go down third, you just tilt it towards that way. You wanna go down first, you tilt it that way. Okay, so now tell me but something. You stay in front of the plate because that keeps the ball fair. Marty shows us how he plays the game. In fact, all these players are still competitive. Over 80 years old, Doc still throws strikes. Yeah. Oh, Petey. There we go. Hey, Tommy. Hi, Scully. Hey, way to hit, Tom. Hey, Scully. Tom um, Scully still finds holes and hits for the fences. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Hold on, just stay there, Tommy, stay there. There you go. Dave Zavraki just keeps running around the bases. He's going. Here's this row. It's a strong one. Put off to the side. So Dave's at second. Nobody out. Threw off the signs. Here's the pitch to Davey. And he hits it. Hard deep to left. 
It's way out there. And we were just waiting that this is the kind of hitting we could be doing. Here's Dave coming around second. And he's going to hold it there. Here's an interesting vantage Bill point. Bill Curry to continues to dominate Mr. Curry at work. and intimidate. Oh, nice pitch. Strike out for Billy. Anybody want to mess with this guy? Look at those eyes. Tom McCuskey is most valuable because he can catch a whole week behind the plate and still pitch an important game and come up with a clutch hit. And right by the right fielder. And so here we are looking for this Build third up. out to complete this game. And it's a hard hit ball back to Tommy. Wow, he made a nice play there. And there is the final out of what turned out to be an exciting and relatively well played game by both teams. We pull out our second win against the DC Dodgers. The Dodgers beat the Dodgers. Bucky is as crafty as ever. While Doug hasn't hit many 450 footers lately, He's hitting some screaming line drives. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, dog. Way to go, dog. Holly, get a hit. That's a nice hit, dog. Nice hit. Time for. And his hitting form still resembles, in many ways, the great Bambino. Hey, hey, Doug, is there any truth to the fact that you were the stand-in for John Goodman and in in Ruth? And, uh, and, uh, absolutely not, but I was the stand-in for uh, Marty uh, O'Brien. Well, who is he? Marty O'Brien? You never heard of Marty O'Brien? No! Oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, the, uh, he's the guy that uh, stole first, second, third, and home. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> so, Doc. Yeah. In the early history of the Livingston Dodgers, there was a character named Jose Martinez. Yes, there was. What can you tell me about him? Uh, Jose was a, a really good teammate, a very nice person, uh, always was willing to do a little bit more than was asked of him, uh, just a good guy to have around, and he was a good pitcher. Very effective. But he had a historic event here with the Livingston Dodgers. Yeah, I think um, the highlight for him and for us was uh, he pitched a perfect game. I don't remember the exact year, but um, we were playing over at City of Palm Stadium. And when he warmed up before the game, I never did this before and I've never done it since. But I went over to him and I said, Jose, you're going to pitch a no-hitter tonight. And lo and behold, Jose went out and pitched not only just a no-hitter, but a perfect game. Yeah. Uh, it was a phenomenal, and we were nervous as hell at the end of the game. I mean, uh, I don't remember if there were very many difficult plays or how many balls were hit to the outfield. Jose could probably tell you that. But it just uh, was just one of those great things that you 
feel happy to be a part of. Oh. And how many perfect games in Roy Hobbs history? To my knowledge, uh, I don't know that there's ever been another no-hitter, let alone a perfect game. So it's probably the only one, oh. as far as I know. Yeah. Not surprisingly, from these terrific ball players, three have been elected to the Roy Hobbs Hall of Fame, the only team with three. Doc, and then Tom, and then Dave. All of them have great stories and memories to share. Tom, the uh, Livingston Dodgers are unusual in Roy Hobbs baseball in that there are three Hall of Famers in the Roy Hobbs Hall of Fame. This is true. And um, you particularly made your mark in Roy Hobbs one season in a three-week season where you hit a barrel load of home runs. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, three weeks, uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s. I was 50 at the time. First week against the 30s, I hit two. Second week against the uh, 40s. I hit three, and last week in the 50s, I hit two. But um, I'm more proud of, I think I had about, I don't know, maybe 12 doubles. And a lot of those were one hoppers off the wall out there. So, you know, it was just a matter of an eighth of an inch, or they, you know, half of those would have been out too. So I was in a real good zone those three weeks, and it was a lot of fun. So still a lot of pop in your bat. Can you give us a few shots in uh, this series? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's at 69 and a half, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, go for it. I hear you. Where'd he go, man? Dave, this is a legendary ballpark. Babe Ruth played here, Ty Cobb, and Tom Skull. That's right. Where did he hit it? I hit it over that scoreboard. How far is that about? That's a deep, deep Probably, place. Yeah. At least 450. Yeah. And he's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. And you're a Hall of Famer. And I'm a Hall of Famer. Dave? Yeah. This is a legendary ballpark, Terry Park. That's right. Terry. All right. Thank you. Of course, not all memories are happy ones. All right. Well, then tell me, an experienced guy like you, how the hell could you step on home plate in game one this year and get called out? Is that true? That's the umpires. Well, I beg your pardon? That's the umpire. The, what? Did the you, umpire says I stepped on, I was standing. Did you call him any names? Come on, Marty, what, what, what the heck, what, what kind of guy was that? What kind of umpire would call you out, huh? I don't know why, I'm standing in front of the plate, and I bunted, and I went like this. Was he blind? Was he stupid? What, what, what the heck was his problem? Umpires are blind and stupid. Jeez, oh, I don't know, okay. And they steal the money. All right, this interview's over. Good. All right, well. By far, most Dodgers agree on one significant highlight in their careers. What highlights for you at playing here at Roy Hobbs? Well, you know, I think uh, probably the season I remember the most is one where I didn't play as much because I was hurt. But uh, Dave Zabracki managed the team and we went on and won a championship. Mm. So I hurt my leg the, like the first game and didn't play until the next to last game. And I pitched that game, pitched the whole game, and we won. And then we went on to uh, win the entire championship. Uh, it's a big highlight. Yes. Not only for you, by the way. <laughs> That 2009 team, winning the AAA crown, brought the Dodgers to an elite level. To get there, they had added yet more talent. The hard-hitting Paul Sabina solidified the outfield and infield. Come on, Paulie! I thought he wasn't looking. Good shot, nice shot. Ready Ready hit, Polly. And the hard throwing Keith Honeywell was a fixture in the rotation.
Venerable old Terry Park was the site of the most important game in Dodgers history. Hey Keith, this is a legendary ballpark. I've seen many greats here, many great events. Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Tom Skull, and Keith Honeywell. I mean, you were looking at that grandstand from the mound. What year was that? Oh, uh, we're going back to 2009. And what great was it? memories here. Yeah, yeah what, was the, what was at stake that day? We were in the finals for uh, the championship. And I uh, had the pleasure of being on the mound and having that responsibility. And that was Triple A that year, right? It was Triple A, yes. Wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And luckily, the guys just had a little bit more gas left to catch the ball, throw the ball, and support me. I heard you did a great job. So it must be a great memory to be here at Terry Park. I just threw the ball over the plate. <laughs> which was great. Yeah. Well, and thanks. More yeah. importantly, we're going to do it again this year. All right. We're going to be in the finals. Great. We're Glad bring, to hear it. Bring back a championship for the Dodgers. Thank you, Keith. Okay, Walter. 2009 really stands out for uh, a lot of reasons. Yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. What can you tell us about that team and about your performance in particular? Well, <clears throat> that was a week when, uh, unfortunately, Doc was ill and he could not make it down. Was he ill? Yeah. Or did, was doctor's he orders. Ill? Yeah, doctor's orders. And uh, so, uh, being his assistant, yeah, I um, took over the team and, uh, you know, managed to uh, get the team through the week. And, uh, but I tell you, the, the team really gelled. I let them uh, pretty much uh, do their thing. So it wasn't really a managerial job that was very hard to do because of the talent that we had. And, uh, Everybody just picked it up a notch, and you know, before the games, we would, uh, you know, give Doc our uh, regards, get in a huddle, and you know, that was kind of uh, bringing the team together. We didn't have a lot of uh, guys, and uh, some of the extras were hurt. Some of our uh, good players, and they were all good. Uh, you know, like Paul Sabina had a, had a pulled, I think it was a hamstring, uh, but he hit the ball all week, and the way he was hitting, he would, you know, all he had to do was get the first base, so, but everybody was hitting that week, and uh, I thought for myself that, uh, you know, I had to kind of be a spark to uh, ignite the team a little bit, and so uh, I put in some extra effort stealing bases and um, you know but I'll tell you uh, we got through that week everybody just played great the pitching was outstanding um, we had uh, Tommy Cusky Tom Cusky pitch the uh, semifinal and then Keith came in and pitched an absolutely great game um, and the only thing I had to say to him before the game was, before his first pitch actually, was that, um, hey, he had fire in his eyes when he came down and he wanted to win. And I just said to him, look, get that fire in your eyes right now and pitch this game. And boy, did he pitch it. Uh, he was inside, outside, right down, a, right down a, the, you know, perfect pitching almost. So we ran away with the game and wound up winning the Triple-A championship. Indeed, this was a team that had become accustomed to the taste of victory. Hey, well, how's it taste? Game called, where in the golden light the bugle rolled the reveille, the shadows creep where night falls deep and taps has called the end of play. The game is done. The score is in. The final cheer and jeer have passed. But in the night beyond the fight, the player finds his rest at last. Not to be overlooked is the social aspect of Roy Hobbs. While some players stay at hotels, others prefer to rent a house with all the comforts of home. There they can relax 
and discuss the day's game. Enjoy meals together. Or kick back and have some fun. There are plenty of places to fish in Florida, even in your backyard. Out there, it's a bass, largemouth bass. First, second, or third bass. Some find they can relax by making music together. visit the karaoke bar once a week. But you can't forget the great meals at Ruby Tuesday. We played six game minimum. Didn't he, didn't he if we make the playoffs, we play up to nine or ten. What the hell was that? <laughs> What the hell was that? Who was that? That was I. Who was that? Now, Bucky. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. How come Pat Tate didn't come in? The Roy Hobbs experience is hard for ball players to resist. They make it possible for us to play on the field of dreams that all players have. In addition to Terry Park, in the Lee County Stadium, the city of Palms Park, and JetBlue Park, we can experience the splendor of the grass. From the batting cages, to the National Anthem. Thank you. However, as we get older, the game doesn't get easier. You know, you just can't hide from this team, Dave. We gotta face it, okay? We gotta go out there and do our best. Sometimes prayer is involved. We're looking towards Mecca. And we may fall down on the job. On the other hand, some things never change. Hit him in that. You take three balls, don't take three strikes. No, but, but the pitches were not one was a strike. Maybe the first one. I was hoping. Get down! Down, down. Got it, got it. No way. No way. No way, Marty. You sure you can't get it fast enough? Come on, Fuqua. Fuqua. You always have it. Come on, Fuqua. Come on, Fuqua. Hey Marty, unhitch the wagon. No problem. Get a better jump next time. Never touch me. No. Great slide. Great slide. Most players enjoy the fellowship among the teams and the bonding on Veterans Day. Veterans. 
It's all about the camaraderie between all teams. Hey, tell me, so what, what, do you have any highlights of being down here? I think the biggest thing about being down here is the fact that, you know, think about when you were a kid. I remember one time I was watching a game when I was a kid. Guy was 60 some odd years old. I was maybe 12, 13 years old. I'm thinking, how could somebody that age be playing baseball, pitching at this time? Well, now we are all these years later, and that's what we're doing. Actually, even older than what they are, yeah. right? So that, and then what happens is you're here for a whole week, and you're a kid again. You're playing baseball every day. You're with your buddies. You're telling jokes. You're playing jokes on each other. It's a, just a great atmosphere. Then the guys that you meet here. You know, like I was playing first base today. We're talking, guys, you know, being friendly. I mean, a lot of stories. That's that's really what it is. Yeah. The camaraderie between everybody. And that's why you don't give it up. That's right. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. great. You have to have a love for it. Well, let's go all the way. Yep. Even Marty discovers the umpires are human. Right now. you got a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't get that on camera, did you? You're up second, Mark. But to stay on top, the lineup requires fresh blood, and we'll go anywhere to find it. Por eso salen tantos peloteros de la República Dominicana, porque se juega todo el año. Cuando no tenemos temporadas, uh, jugamos uno en contra del otro, y la pasamos bien. What were the fields like when you were growing up in the Dominican Republic? Uh, that was there was actually no field. We played in the ground. It's just grass all over the places and weed all over the places. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, what does it mean to you to be playing here in Roy Hobbs? Is uh, at this age... On these fields? At this field, playing on this field at this age, age of 67, to me, it, it's a big plus, my life. And I'm expecting to keep doing it until my body say, that's enough. Playing with a bunch of guys like you guys uh, is a privilege to me. Not everybody have the chance to do it, and I really appreciate that. Just look at the contributions from the newcomers. First pitcher of the second inning. Oh, and he ties into it. And it's going to go over the guy's head. Look at this. It's all the way to the green monster. He double over the left fielder's head his first time up. And he hits it this one deep one to center field. And the center fielder makes a good run at it, but it's over his head again. Me too. Oh, yeah. 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 There we go. yeah. It's two. 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 Right two. Way. Yeah. Right Help to get us where we are today in the finals. Davy. Nice going, Pete. Way to go, Pete. Ah, boy. Oh, way to go. Come on, go, 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 go. Okay, way to go. Right. Nice. Hey, 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 way to hit. Round the base, round the base. But if you play with the Dodgers long enough, you can be part of history. In the 2017 season, an 80-plus-year-old Doc Pollock added to his pile of victories. Doc just threw.
and through. And through strikes. Everyone gave their all. And he got great defense up the middle. Meanwhile, the offense kept the pressure on, and the base runners circling OBI. the diamond. <laughs> oh, nice shot. Nice shot. They took advantage of every mistake by the opponent. And came up with the clutch hits. In the late innings, the pace slowed, and the game took on a magic of its own. In a perfect ending, another Hall of Famer came in to seal the victory for the doctor. Everybody come here, please. Fred! Doc has just won his 1,027 games. 28, 28. Oh, you told oh, me 27. Oh, I, I can't count. Oh, what, I, what the hell? I got the 27 cut, down. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah. <laughs> so I love all these guys. They're great ball players. And without them, who knows what would have happened. He would have won. They gave me enough games. runs yeah. To, yeah. to win no matter what that I did. That was my 600 yeah. right. saves. And you so got how many games is that? 1,028? And a special thanks. Special thanks to Dougie, who he probably uh, All right, Dougie. Yeah. stocked about 25 <laughs> balls in the dirt. Good job, guys. What number right? was that again? Number 1,028. 28. No, so that was the number of pitches in today's game. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, baseball is all about the friendship, the memories, and the love of the game. Game called. On the field of life, the darkness gathers far and wide. The dream is done. The score is spun that stands forever in the guide. 
nor victory, nor yet defeat is chalked against the player's name. But down the roll, the final scroll shows only how he played the game. Get on the field again. 